ok đây Minchia, pretty nice ci siamo c'è un po' di delay vediamo se riesco a toglierlo Flammatemi se c'è qualcosa che non va Users in chat cosa vuol dire nessuno? Siete quattro, vi vedo sei un fantasma per fortuna incredibile c'è qualcuno che ah vediamo un po' linkiamo lo stream spammiamolo a un po' di scemi tanto qua vediamo che succede si sente bene il volume eccetera allora che poi io non so modificare tutte queste cose per ora però però posso andarci a guardare se mi, se mi dicete che qualcosa non va quindi voi nel dubbio ditemelo poi magari non lo so risolvere no minchia coria non mi bottare anche non mi bottare anche la mia chat sono già tutte bottate porca miseria ci mancano, ci mancano i bot immagina su 4 viewer incredibile le click farm dei cinesi Click, no, Paolo ha rinominato Click, quindi sono le Paolo Farm dei cinesi. Ah, e a chi altro lo devo mandare? Uh, qua dentro. Opla. Allora, finché siamo tutti italiani, rimango, uh, cioè continuo a parlare italiano. Poi se arrivano un po' di... Englishman, allora uh, I would switch to English, of course. Oppure posso fare la traduzione simultanea, simultaneous translation, parlare due lingue, speaking two languages contemporaneamente at the same time. So uh, it's not going to be easy, non sarà facile, ma ce la possiamo fare, but I guess it could be done. Uh, impazzisci, no, I won't get crazy at all, like, uh, non succederà per niente. Uh, forse la cosa più difficile è fare la traduzione subito the hardest thing would be translating and on the spot and it would be not, not as easy as one would think non sarà così facile come qualcuno può pensare però ja kann ich te vor de posvenska en men ja kann ich vor 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 affanculo provare Flexing on languages minchia appena attaccato con lo svedese di mezza tv ora va bene va bene ma questi sono i topicchelli di cui andrò a parlare eccoli qui e, boh ce n'è un po' eh però chissà quali interessano chissà 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 se i delfini si lavano anyway Parlia vorrei parlare quello di cui mi piacerebbe parlare è um, qualcosa un pochino sugli LPL se sì, ci sono i miei amici cinesi non solo tu Coria ma anche i miei amici del LPL Cord um, che loro appunto ne sanno un po' uh, e sono interessati a un po' come va la scena in China anche perché hanno vinto loro il mondiale quindi sono belli carichi e, e poi dato che immagino che ci saranno un po' di italo-europei o cose del genere eh, due chiacchiere su come funzionano questi locally trained players e questo mi ha fatto il pollo incredibile sozze grazie pollo made in Amelia eh, paga Marco in tutto questo eh, io mi berrò una fantastica eh, birra 
al miele fatemi un attimo vedere qua io non si capisce un cazzo questo affare qua esatto e non so cosa c'è scritto mi immagino che sia una birra al miele perché ci sono gli esagoni quindi o è birra extec ma penso che sia il miele perché il giallo non è extec e, um, il desync di web audio questo me lo scrivo è fastidioso proviamo a scrivere è fastidioso birra bandita tra riot secondo te non è al miele Andiamo a vedere. allora la marca allora quando sono arrivato in Polonia la prima cosa che ho detto che ho chiesto è qual è la birra polacca più buona e a me hanno detto la birra polacca più buona è quella cecoslovacca e allora ho capito che qualcosa non andava e quindi ho preso una birra cecoslovacca credo tra l'altro sono un maiale perché non l'ho messa in frigo ma sti cazzi è troppo diverso cosa? non abbiamo paura del diverso qua Sì, è dolcissima cazzo sa anche un po' di sigaretta che non so se non so se la birra alla sigaretta è intenzionale eh, però non fumo quindi come faccio a sapere come sa la, cosa sa la sigaretta discord no come si chiama? Cie Chan questa sembra un po' veramente cinese Cie Chan penso che si legga Zie Chan ma non lo so non so leggere nel cinese e nel polacco mm. però è buona ah no è polacca è polacca c'è scritto Pierce pivo mio dove vi polce fantastico allora voi in qualsiasi momento mi potete fare delle domande non vi mostrerò i capezzoli e, e io ovviamente se, eh, se sono buone domande per iniziare a parlare di qualche cosa per fare un, un buon discorso allora eh, è apprezzato e mi metterò a parlare a caso di quelle eh, allora questi rumor di lecchi in realtà preferirei non, non, non parlarne perché c'è ovviamente un sacco di gente più osorevole di me che ne sta parlando molto di più e molto meglio tipo shot caller di Darius eh, oh Hello Shen, ok so I'll switch to English, sorry Italian friends, um, yeah basically about rumors, one asked, um, yeah the only rumor that I want to focus on is the only confirmed one actually, uh, which is, which is Youngbuck to XL, and I think it's great, I think it's great, uh, well not for Fnatic, Fnatic will take a very like heavy dip because despite the haters Erminio Tone welcome wow it's like inc incredible yeah I, I probably have a natural talent for talking a lot because I talk to myself a lot and might look crazy but like it makes so some sort of sense or just let me believe it mm. Ok, so basically Youngbuck to, L to XL, why do I like it so much? Because Youngbuck has always been, um, I think it's confirmed, yeah, yeah, the, the, the org, both orgs have confirmed the transfer of Youngbuck to XL, but like so far, uh, I love you Shen, thank you so much. Uh, I will also flame Royal, don't worry, that, that's a constant. Um, Yeah, why do I like uh, Excel so much taking Youngbug? Youngbug so far has won like six or seven um, LEC titles, which is absurd. But he did it on the best teams. He was on G2, he has been on Fnatic. And yeah, it's like the best you can ask on Europe. It's the only two teams basically that managed to win the region uh, in recent times. So yeah uh, let's say it was an achievement it's great but uh, now going to a different team will be a whole new challenge for him and to understand how precious uh, how valuable Youngbuck is as a coach and there was a great post by Ferrickton uh, a few days ago on Facebook 
and he basically like he was in Italian so uh, I will translate it if someone is in English but still he talked how the internal conflict among fanatic members was so great at the beginning that uh, the team could could not know how to win and that's not okay if you're fanatic and and you need to solve this because you're fanatic and you cannot not win so yeah Young Buck managed to do that in, in, in a surprisingly short amount of time. I remember, for example, how dire the situation was at like midway through Spring Split and Fnatic were like a, three wins and eight loss or, or something like that. Yeah, as Sotse says, like uh, they were third by playing a monodimensional playstyle pretty much and they got like blasted by Origin who themselves got blasted by uh, by G2 and then they somehow like they worked it up and made it top two in, in, in Summer Split and it was so incredible that they could challenge G2 despite the difficulties that they had at the time so I don't know coaching staff had really so much to be praised for so that was lovely by Young Buck and he took them uh, to group stage I mean in a group with Royal week one Fnatic should not have passed the group adapting it's not a thing that players do by themselves it's like you need staff to be there okay so yeah, Young Buck did that, and it's it was so like crucial for that. So yeah, everyone who thinks Young Buck did nothing beside picking Yumi and Garen, get out of chat because uh, that's wrong. And I I think he will show it uh, on Excel, and I mean. The best thing that I like about this move is that uh, he has nothing to lose, literally. Like, if Excel get to, let's say, top four, top three, whatever, like, playoffs, playoffs already for spring would be great, if, if like, depending on the roster. And he, if he gets to that result, it means that what Young, Young Buck is bringing is really, really valuable. So that would be incredible but if they fail that doesn't matter at all for him it's like uh yeah it's excel what do you expect it's it's he has nothing to lose so i love that that transfer and i think whatever whatever happens he will uh bring something uh new uh for lec it's time it's really time that Europe gets someone else to win the region. So I think Young Buck can do that if if he is provided the right means, the right players. And as I said before, yeah, Shen, I'm drinking a honey milk, uh, honey milk, honey beer. Europe stuck on an EDG cycle. Yeah, that's that's a bit true and Yeah, okay. There's also a rumor which I'm not confirmed, but I would love if that was true That Hillisang might follow him at Excel so Why would I love that because like imagine imagine Hillisang you would criticize it so much, but the real problem with Hillisang in Fnatic was not that he was inting, was it was that he was initiating and Reckless did not follow him and Broxa did not follow him, so Hillisang was making the correct plays with the wrong support. So in a team with different players that are more willing to follow the lead of an experienced support such as Hillisang he can really be great. Healing Reckless is one of the worst support for Reckless. That's true. And, and and it's the other way around as well. Reckless is one of the worst AD carries for Hillisang. Because believe like this might not be an okay opinion to say, but like 
if you say, okay, you have Hillisang in your bot lane, choose an AD carry, I would pick Jeskla. Jeskla, Jeskla, yeah. Uh, over Reckless, because I think Jeskla is a very aggressive player, and being young, he would follow Hillisang on the engages, and it could be a kill lane, even if Jeskla is not on the same mechanical level of, of Reckless. Yeah. Uh, I think they, the, a Yeska, the Yeska Hillisang bot lane can do much better than Reckless and Hillisang, and 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 it shows that like the f video of Fnatic YouTube with a double interview of like Reckless and Teddy. No, uh, do you like? Can you make me a TLDR of the video uh, so I can discuss about it? So yeah, uh, it, it it sounds stupid. Mm. It sounds super stupid, but I would take uh, for sure Yeskla. Yeskla also has a lot of room f for improvement, which we cannot say for Reckless. And and yeah, depend if they keep Kadril as a jungler. Kadril is also pretty young, and he's been improving a lot. So yeah. They ask the player which support they prefer. Clockwork in five, but that's all that. Cisco. And yeah, so let's say isn't comp better than Yeska? Okay, that's a good question. That's a good question because comp for sure deserves LEC. Uh, I don't know how he will perform against other LEC AD carries, but for sure he will be, uh, he is like at the level of like trying to compete in the in the scene. So I would love uh, if, if he was like uh, picked up by a team. Uh, vabbè, oh, io vedo solo italiani in chat, quindi parlo italiano e sti cazzi, se qualcuno ha dei problemi me lo scrive. Um, ok, cioè sostanzialmente Uh, è vero che um, Comp potrebbe essere più forte però, però uh, Jeskla, Jeskla ha già giocato con, in LEC e diciamo che ha un, ha un pochino più di esperienza oh no Shen you're still here sorry guys I baited you switch to English again uh, I'm also undressing because yes ok But I would love, I would love um, Comp to be picked in a team. Comp. And the other one, which was like Karzi, I think. Yeah, Karzi is also very deserving as a team. And one of the, yeah, Karzi and Comp should definitely, if, if they don't make it uh, over fucking Attila, Then I would be disappointed because I don't see a world where LEC keeps Attila. It's like there are better players. I don't care about the contract. Just like exile him into Vitality B, please. Uh, contract is with the org, not with the LEC, so he can be in Vitality B. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope so. Hello, Chamfer Eggs. Noticed. Um, okay, so yeah, that, that's like that's my take on on XL. I have great uh, great hopes for them, depending on who they get as a top, like in the in the remaining lanes. I I really I really hope they keep Jeskla though, because I I really want to see Jeskla and and Hillisang together. I I think they will be f so fun uh, to see. So, um, another team that I'm very excited about is Evil Geniuses. Um, I don't, I don't want to talk about NA too much, but I just like I just want to drop a word on EG because I love how they're building their team. It's it's just like I really like it because like they have Svenskeren as a like veteran experienced uh, jungler and one of the best in the region so that's that's nice 
And Zezo, who already played with Svenskern for two years, they have a good synergy. Uh, Zezo is also has a way higher cap than um, than he can achieve with uh, with Sneaky because Sneaky has had a like disappointing twenty nineteen. So I think Zezo can improve much better. Then they picked up also Kumo, and Deftly. Deftly, I think he is. LCS ready and he can compete with the other AD carries. I don't want to see him like stranded on Academy one more year Let the guy play. He has been on Academy for too long already. So let definitely play Kumo is a um, is a uh, oh rumor says that C9 stopped the trade that would be disappointing that would be disappointing uh, because I really love the the roster building from from evil geniuses but like despite that despite like the relevancy of 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 the rumors like whether if if it's true or not i just like yeah i sorry sotse i won't talk about na uh but i just love uh what evil geniuses is doing i think every org wherever should take their example so one veteran player who already established himself uh, as one of the best players in the region uh, one player that has played with him in the past for a long time and then young players and one rookie that's like uh, if I had to build a team that would be my way to go that works if you're talking about LPL, CB LOL, PG Nationals also I don't care where you're trying to build your team it's it's um, that, that that's like I, I think it's the best way uh, where where like how to build a team from scratch and evil geniuses have the investment specifically I think it's what Tess top esports tried to do over in LPL they kind of failed because well we, we can see that after one year but like uh, as in their sort of first year as a decent team they were one step away from qualifying two worlds, so it's not a complete fla failure. Isn't it a bit worrying that a lot of orgs in NA start by building on C9 players? No, it's not weird. It's because C9 is the only fuck fucking organization that can actually bring up rookies. Nobody else in the region can do that. And it, of course that everyone tries to take C9 players because that's where the rookie come from. And they have no other uh, means. Uh, nobody, not even 100 Thieves who should be great at that because they have like Kelsey Moser. I have insane respect for the girl, but they can't train rookies for shit. They have someday in fucking Academy. So C9 is like... I hope they never fire their scouts, their trainers, they, their coaches. Wh whoever is doing that work for them is doing a region's worth of work. And they're insane. I hope Loco explodes. Liko, Sneaky and Blabber. Yeah, that's that's like even if even if the rumor of EG taking their players is true, C9 still have a perfectly okay team. Yeah, like I mean, alcohol live, not alcohol broadcast. Kids are watching clock. Yeah, this is why I have a honey beer. Honey, me I don't know Polish, but this is honey. I'm pretty sure. Uh. Yeah, beer review. It tastes like cigarette, but it's very sweet. So yeah, it can do. It can do. It's a good beer. Uh, not the best one. This is the best one that I had so far. I can't pronounce the name for shit, but like this is a good beer. Advised. Yeah. Okay. Sponsored by beers. Nisk is a coin flip. Depends on when he has a leg day. Basically, I I did not watch enough LCS to to say that, but like yeah, that's true. But let's like uh, just without talking about NA directly, like I don't care about rumors really. But let let's like talk about this topic here. I want to hear from you in the chat. Can Vietnam 
surpass LCS. I'm not sure here. And it's a very, I think it's a very like contentious topic. It, it can be, I can see reasonable points uh, from both ways. Because like, first off, Vietnam is broke. They're really poor. Sotse, uh, Vietnam really surpassed us, yes. Mm, I would say, I would like to say so, but I think they're not having the results yet because at Worlds they still did some kind of disappointing thing. I mean, Liquid, not in a general, but like Liquid did better overall, even if by slightly. So, yeah, I think Vietnam is not already. Uh, He's not yet at the level. Clock just hates NA so much they want uh, F uh, VCS to be better. Yes, I would love if VCS became better than NA. So I was wondering, yeah, could it be possible? So why would it be possible? Okay, Vietnam is, I think, the third most populated uh, server, which is uh after korea sorry after china and europe there's vietnam so they have a huge player base and huge player base is in in a small country is what allows you to find talent no matter no matter what so there in time like in 2 years from now vietnam players are going to be better than na players I don't care about any scouting grounds, any investment, any ping reduction. That's going to happen sooner or later because they have like triple the population and one tenth of the size. So a server is definitely going to work better for them. Yeah, that's a plus. But a big minus, it's 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 they're poor. They're, they they have don't like I think they pay l salaries on level of PG Nationals, so like three hundred uh hundred euros, eh, which is really little. Um yeah, that that's something really they their their players are going to be imported by Chinese teams, by Pacific League teams. Um and it's it's going to be really easy, but for example, that's all that could also turn into a plus because Loki Esports, the second Vietnamese team who took part in Worlds from Vietnam, is actually an NA org. Yeah, thirty dollars like like they're stupidly uh, undervalued compared to the salary that we have in mind in Europe or or NA. But that could also mean that it would be easier to invest in that region low-key esports as i was saying it's it's a it's an na org look it up on Ligpedia. it's an org from north america and they just don't didn't bother investing in north america there would be no use for them to do that they invested in vcs look at the result second split in the league they got two worlds that's pretty insane i would say so i want to see more investment into the Vietnam scene, especially from orgs in NA that would like to enter esports, but they cannot because NA doesn't provide the, th the same level of, of progression that Vietnam has. No, uh, Chamfer, you did not miss the LPL stuff. I'm just like answering questions as people ask them. And uh, I hopped into this topic here, which is underlined uh, because nobody was asking anything, so yeah. What is happening?